Okay, physical science. Talk, today we're talking about, um, just a, we're going to do a little, since you've already watched the video about the concepts of the chapter, we're going to do a very brief video about the types of nuclear radiation. Types of nuclear radiation. And we're going to do the little bit of math that goes along with them. Types of nuclear radiation. Um, you should have already known this certainly from your text, but um, probably also from the video that you were to have watched about this that I recorded last year. But what is the what is radiation referred to in general? I'm not looking for specifically nuclear radiation at this point. No, not always heat, but it does it is related to the word radiator, like the radiators in the classroom are the radiator at the generally front of a car. Radiators, decay of atoms. Okay, that's nuclear radiation. But it's also related to the word radius. Let's draw this. There's him. Where's the radius? On the outside. Middle. Okay, so it is both on the outside and in the middle, but it's that actually the, the line the segment cross. from the center to the outside. But there, is there just one radius? There's one size of radius. That's the definition of a circle. But is there just one radius? No, there's radii. Uh, you could draw any number, actually literally infinite number of radii. There's diameter. Out. And what the, God bless you, the, the radius of a circle what, what word do you think relates to the way the radius behaves as it goes, as it is drawn from the center of a circle to the outside? Yes, what Di verb? No, no, what verb? I thought it, it radius what? was like a measurement of how big it, it is. Radiates. radiates. It radiates. That's what, so the radiator, let's draw another example. The radiator in the room radiates, in this case, infrared radiation, but it radiates heat. It's coming out from a central point. The star radiates electromagnetic radiation. Radiation means the energy that moves out from a central point. So please write that down. Energy moving out from a central point. You remember from last year when we talked about electromagnetic radiation, that the, like the lights emit electromagnetic radiation. That's not the same as nuclear radiation or what you've heard of in radiation therapy for cancer. The radiation means energy radiating out or energy spreading out from a central point. The sun, a radiator, the light emits radiation, but it doesn't, it's not all, um, fallout for radiation that's going to make your bones grow two heads or whatever. It's, it, radiation just means it's moving out from a central point. If we, have, if we aren't going to do this because it would be chaotic, but if we had all the freshmen pile onto the middle table and then we all move to the outside of the room, you will have radiated. Anything moving out from a central point is, is considered radiation. But we're talking specifically here about nuclear radiation. So, so the energy that moves out from a central point specifically relating to the guess from chapter 17. Nucleus. Nucleus, relating to the nucleus, which, if you remember right, is the middle part of an atom, surrounded by the electron cloud, but it's this middle part that contains what two subatomic particles? Protons and, protons and neutrons. So we're talking about the protons and neutrons and how they um, spread out from a central point, the nucleus. There are six types of nuclear radiation. Is this all visible? Oh, I didn't. Okay. There are six types of nuclear radiation. We're going to have here, we're going to say its name. This should be familiar if you watch the video, but we're going to do it in this context so that you can actually pay attention because some people say that watching the video is like watching a fly trap in a window. But we're also going to write it over here so that if you have questions in real life, you can ask them. There's going to be a symbol. We're going to write its mass. We're going to write its charge. And we're going to write an example. I'm trying to think if that's all that we will need. Let's, let's go like that. Um, let's actually write the name of its um, particle emitted to. I don't remember if that was in there, but it's going to be this time. Okay, let's conceptually, how will each of these types of radiation affect the nucleus? What are they doing to the nucleus? They're all going to be either matter or energy or both. Doing what to the nucleus? Yeah. What verb? No. What verb? Radiating. Radiating out from the nucleus. They are leaving the nucleus. As when the bell rings, when you radiate out from this room, 
you're all going to leave the room and spread out from this central point. You're relatively centrally contained right now, aren't you? But if we compare where you are now to where you will be at your blog and be at practice, but if you, let's say 6 o'clock tonight, if we, can, if we say this is the nucleus, as you radiate out into the world, this you're leaving from a central place. You're leaving from a central place. So all of these things are going to be leaving the nucleus. In math, they are going to be what of, from the nucleus? What math Creating. function are they going to be? They're going to be subtracted from the nucleus. So all of these, all of these are going to be subtracted. Oops, let's put it like this. Subtracted from the what we call parent nucleus. I'm going to, with the first example, I'm going to um, draw a little diagram that labels these things. I'm going to leave a little bit more room. One, two, three, four. There are six types of nuclear radiation. The first one we're going to talk about is alpha. The symbol is the lowercase Greek letter alpha, which this is one of my favorite little letters to draw. I draw this a lot in my statistics class, but I also draw it a lot in Physics, I, I love this little letter. Look at it, check it out. Yeah, I, I like to start it so I can differentiate between, if I ever, I don't normally write lowercase as you know, but if I do, I usually make my A like that. I start from his little head and I curl him down like that. But the alpha I start with is top tail and make like a little fish. I was going to say a backwards fish, but guess what? Fish can go in third direction. So he's not a backwards fish, he's just a regular old fish. Um, I like to draw the lowercase letter alpha. That's one of the few joys that I have left in my life. Okay, let's, uh, there, what, what would the, do you remember from your text or from the video what the mass of the alpha particle is? Nope. Nope. Four. Four. Six. Nice. Four. It is two protons and two neutrons. Two protons and two neutrons, which adds up to, as you remember from last chapter. Eight. Woo. Four. Two and two is four. Yeah. <laughs> Who said eight? That's not good. Okay, uh. If it's two protons and two neutrons, and that's all it is, what is its charge? Positive two. Positive two. Positive two. Positive. The particle emitted, we say the alpha particle, is a helium-4 nucleus. Whoa. So helium, the symbol for helium, H-E, four here meaning it's what? Be very careful. How many? Two, two protons, two neutrons. Two protons, two neutrons, it's mass number. Four is the mass number. What's the two? Charge. No, not in this case. This is two down here. So it's atomic, atomic number. number. Atomic number, and then the two plus up here is the it's charge. charge. Good. Okay, the classic example of this is if we have uranium-238. We say it undergoes, that's what we pronounce this little arrow as, so uranium-238. Once again, what's the U mean? Uranium. uranium. What's the 238 mean? Oh. It's... <laughs> no. And it goes. What? No. Mass number. Mass number. Mass number. So uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay. So <laughs> you can do this two ways. You can either write the symbol alpha, or you can write the, the symbol of the particle. We're going to do this one because I think it'll make it easier. So we're going to rewrite the helium-4 nucleus here. And then what else is going to be produced? Well, so if this guy, this alpha particle, this helium-4 nucleus, is leaving from uranium-238, what's going to happen to uranium-238? It's going to decrease. It's going to decrease. It's going to what math function? Subtract. subtract. We're going to subtract the mass and the charge, I'm sorry, the mass and the atomic number from that of the uranium. So if, if it's 238 is its mass number, and we're subtracting the mass number of the alpha particle, what is it now? 234. 234. So let's write that up here first. 234. 234. This wasn't written, and it doesn't have to be, and it probably won't be, but what is the ma or sorry, the atomic number of uranium always? 92. It's 92. It's always 92. How did Faye know that? He's a wizard. He is a wizard. No, how did he know that? He must have looked at the book. It's on the back book here. How did he look? He didn't have to must have looked on the book. It's up here. I just had it. Uranium is the atomic number 92. That's what makes it uranium. Remember, this is from last, last chapter for all of them. Every atom with 92 protons, or atomic number 92, is uranium, and every uranium atom has 92 protons, right? That has to be that way. So what's 92 minus, what are we going to subtract now? 2. 2. What's 92 minus 2? 90. We don't, necessarily, we don't necessarily have to write that. Why? How do I know this, this big guy symbol? Well, if he's 90, what must he be? 
thorium. And why do I not have to write the 90? Because, because it's the letters. It's implied. Yeah. Because thorium is always 90, and everything that's 90 is thorium. So I can go without writing this 90, but it might make it easier if you do write it. So this is the example. Yeah. Can I speak for Taylor for a minute? Please, yeah. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, sorry, I, I, remember, I remember saying something that I wanted to show you here. Does anyone remember what it was? Uh, oh, I was going to label these things. So this is called the parent isotope. Why, why would that make sense? Because it's the beginning one. It's the beginning one. It's the one I'm starting with. And then this is called the daughter isotope. And then that was the daddy. <laughs> no. This one is called the decay mode. Oh, what? That's like decay way different. mode. The way it decays. So we say, and we pronounce it like this. I'm going to write it over here. We pronounce it like this. Please write this down. We're gonna, we pronounce it as uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay. That's the decay mode. And produces... Thorium 234. We pronounce it uranium 238 undergoes alpha decay and produces thorium 234. So, what's the decay mode? Hey, there will be questions on your test to say that you'll be given this and you'll say, what was the decay mode? Or you might even just be given the uranium 238 and the thorium 234 and say, what was the decay mode? Well, then you have to work backwards. But what is the decay mode here? What kind of nuclear radiation was it? You only know one kind of, so this should not be alpha. difficult. It was alpha. It is alpha. Okay, the next one. Do you have questions about that one before we move on? Yeah. Does this make sense? Could you do this on your test? Ready for it, I'm money. Okay, next one is called, there are two kinds. Your book only talks about beta decay, but there are two kinds of beta decay. So please pay attention because one of these is not in your book at all. Maybe put your money away. Beta, this one, first one we're going to talk about is beta, oops, let's at least spell it right. We're going to the trouble to make the video, we might as well spell it right. We're gonna, the first one is called beta minus. The one your book talks about, which it just calls beta, is actually beta minus. This is my least favorite thing about your book. I really like your book except that there are actually two kinds of beta decay. The one your book talks about that it just calls beta is actually beta minus. Symbol, the Greek letter beta, with it like a B with the tail. The minus symbol. Its mass, you should probably know from the book or the video. What's its mass? What's the mass of the beta minus? Or what your book calls this beta? It's zero. It is a what? What's leaving the nucleus? What is actually produced by the nucleus? Minus two. Electron. An electron. Electron produced, so what's its charge then? Negative one. Negative one. Just like an electron. Because what's happening, and hey, don't make, don't make a mistake. It's not, it's not an electron, I don't know, from the wild. We'll talk about that later. Um, but it's producing an electron. What's actually happening is, do you remember the four fundamental forces of the universe? What are they? Earth. Oh, golly, no. What are the four fundamental forces of the universe? Fire, Strong fire, nuclear. Fire, and air. And air. Uh, electromagnetic. 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 We, we strong force. nuclear. And gravity. And gravity. So uh, the one that we haven't talked about at all. Side Shh, be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. The, hey, please. Everyone in the world can hear you. Um, the weak nuclear force is the one we haven't talked about yet, and what's happening is that the weak nuclear force mediates this process in the nucleus, wherein, in this case, a neutron, what's its charge? What is it? Well, I've heard two different answers, which is ridiculous. Zero is the, is the charge. A, nu a neutron in the nucleus, somewhere in whatever the example is going to be, there's a neutron, and it's going to fling out an electron, a tiny little baby electron, and it's going to become a proton. So it's losing a negative charge, which makes it into a proton. So in the nucleus, a neutron becomes a proton and throws out an electron, and that's beta minus decay. The particle emitted is an electron. So in this case, we have... Silicon 29, I believe it's 29. Let me, let me actually check here. These are the ones I needed the iPad for to get some examples. <coughs> it's not 29, it's 31. Silicon 31. Silicon 31 
undergoes, and we can, once again, we can write this either in its symbol, beta minus, or its particle emitted. I'm going to put particle emitted. So silicon 31 undergoes beta minus, releasing an electron, and becoming, now check it out. What, are, what mathematical operation are we going to do with this? What's the mass? What's the mass of our decay particle? Nothing. Zero. zero. So what are we going to do with the zero and the mass of the silicon? Is it going to change at all? No. No? So what's the mass of the new thing? What's the mass of the daughter here? No. Come on. 32 because it no, needs No, 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 no. It's releasing an electron which has a mass of? Zero. Zero. So what's its new mass? 31. It's still 31. It's releasing something with no mass, and so its mass doesn't change. Doesn't change. But if it's releasing a negative charge from its nucleus, what's happening to its atomic number? What's the atomic number of silicon to start with? It's 14. So what if it's if it's releasing a negative charge? It's now subtracting a negative. So now it's potassium. It's now no. Come on. Okay, you can do this. I know you can do better math. This. It was 14. I'm sorry. It was, yeah, it was 14. Now it's 15. It's subtracting a negative. 14 minus negative 1 is... Have you taken algebra? <laughs> so what's the answer to this question? 15. Thank you. 14 minus negative 1 is 15. So now our, our new atomic number is 15. So what element is it? Potassium. Potassium. It's phosphorus. Why about that? Oh, that would be. I see now why you were saying potassium will. Yeah. I. Now it makes sense. I was thinking will have gone off the dang rails, but now it makes sense. The P stands for phosphorus. Though. Yeah, I can't. Okay. See why. So look, look, Kasson, please. Look, if it's releasing a negative charge from the nucleus, the atomic number goes up, just like when you subtract a negative in math. If you are releasing a negative charge, the atomic number goes up. Does the mass number change in this one? Does the mass number change? No. But the atomic number goes up one. Okay? Next one is called beta plus. Still no mass, but now it has a positive one charge, and it releases what's called a positron, which is an electron but has a positive charge. It's, it's antimatter. Um, that's more probably, I would guess, that's why your book doesn't talk about it, because it doesn't want to go into the fact that antimatter even exists. But it does. There is antimatter, which is the same thing as normal matter, except the charges are reversed. So instead of a proton with a positive charge in the nucleus, there is instead a, a negatively charged, I don't even know what it would be called, but it's not a proton. It's a negatively charged massive particle. Is that just a theory? No, it's real. Oh. It's real. This where, is observable. Where do you find it? It's not. It's not observable in real life. But okay, you know about a PET scan. You probably know someone who's had a PET scan, yeah. which is, stands for positron emission tomography. Oh. And a PET scan uses this pet process scan. where antimatter, where antimatter is produced to um, to analyze the insides of a person. Anyway, so in this case, let me find a let me find a new one here. I'm going to find one. With a cat? No, it's not a CAT scan. I'm talking about a PET scan. What's a PET scan? Uh, PET scan is something. It's, it's a lot more detailed than even an MRI. People get them a lot of times if, they're, if there's a suspicion cancer. that they have cancer, yeah. Oh. Um, not, not, that's not the only reason. I'm sure there could be others, but. Sorry, I'm trying to find one that has beta plus decay, and I'm not having very good luck. What I do to find the examples is I just go through, shh, please stop talking. Okay, here we have rubidium 82. Rubidium 82. Okay, here we have rubidium 82. And it undergoes, be quiet please. Everyone here you remember. Rubidium 82 undergoes. Rubidium 82 undergoes beta plus decay, emitting a positron. And now, remember it's leaving the nucleus, so we're going to subtract a. So now it's going to become negative. So, but first of all, what's going to happen to the mass? Does the mass change at all? No. No. So now it's still going to be 82. But now, instead of rubidium, which was, sorry, it's hidden behind my little computer here, which was 37, it's going to subtract a positive, so it's going to go 
36. down to 36. So now it's Krypton 82. The mass doesn't change. Mass stays the same. So in these two, tell me how the mass changes. In both kinds of beta decay, how does the mass change? It doesn't. No mass change. Mass stays the same. And then the little cheat code is in beta minus, this is count, the, reason, the way you can remember this is that's opposite of what you would think. Um, beta minus, the atomic number goes up one, and in beta plus, the atomic number goes down one. Good? Remind me, um, I'm going to erase my red here. Remind me, how did the mass and the atomic number change in alpha decay? Mass goes down. Four. Four. Number goes down. Two. Two. And then in, in both of these, the mass stays the same, and number changes. Okay. The next one. The next one is called gamma. The symbol for gamma. Oh, is another little fish, fancy little upside down fish. I would say upside down fish, but fish can go any way they want, so it's just a normal <laughs> fish. Um, mass zero, charge zero. Well, that makes it easy. The symbol we just we just use the same symbol again. This one makes it really easy. And usually this one is in conjunction with another one. There's usually some other kind of decay. In fact, I think there's always some other kind of decay that happens at the same time. Always. So it's always going to be partnered with another kind of decay. Um, yeah, so this will work. Arsenic 74 undergoes, in this case, arsenic 74 undergoes beta minus and gamma and becomes, well, let's just do this one as a review of beta minus. Will its mass change? Will its mass change? No. No. So its mass is still what? 74. And the beta minus made it go up or down? Up. So it was arsenic, here number 33, and now it's selenium, which is 34. But, li but listen, it changed because of this guy. What's he? What's he? Electron. An electron. What kind of decay is this? From up, from up or further in the table? What do we call it? Beta minus. Beta minus. The gamma did not change at all. So the gamma, even though the gamma decay did happen, the gamma causes no change. It always happens with another little devil. It always happens with another one, but it doesn't itself change it. The gamma causes no change. It's emitted, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example that would relate to your silly little lives. Um, it's like when you go to the, the McDonald and they and you want yourself a cheeseburger, but they give you the fries. You don't give them one darn about the fries. You're still going to eat them, but they're just they're just come along. Right? Does that kind of make sense? Whatever. Okay. Next one. The next one is called electron capture. Well, that was a bad example. Pretend I didn't say it then. Electron capture again. We we use this little Greek letter epsilon, a curly little devil. Greek letter epsilon. It's like an E, but curly. And it's actually this is the same um, this is the same height in your little font as a, a lowercase letter. So it's a little curly E. Mass. What's the mass of an electron? No. Zero. What's the mass of an electron? Zero. The charge is. Negative one. The charge of an electron is negative one, and the particle emitted. <laughs> But in this case, the particle is not emitted, it is absorbed. We found an example of electron capture. Okay, here we go. Rhodium 101. Um, RH. Rhodium? Rhodium 101. Now check this out. Rhodium 101, instead of, we, we, it is not releasing an electron. What's this implying? It's it's gaining an electron. So in this case, this is the only one where we put it on the same side as the parent isotope. So rhodium-101 absorbs an electron, we say, and it becomes, okay, now think about it. If an electron comes into the nucleus, this is the opposite of the beta decay. In these ones, an electron or a positron was leaving the nucleus. But now we're absorbing an electron. What happens in this decay mode is the uh, an electron in the first orbit 
around the nucleus is just absorbed by the nucleus. So what would that change? Well, it would change a proton into a neutron, which has the same effect as beta plus decay. So gaining a negative charge is the same as losing a positive charge. And so now we're going to subtract. So what's the mass? Is the mass going to change at all? No. No. Try it. So what's the mass? 101. 101. And now it's gaining a negative charge. So that means it's going to go down one. So instead of being rhodium, it's going to be ruthenium. So in this case, this is the only one we write the decay mode on the same side as the parent isotope. And it, its mass doesn't change still. Still no change in mass. No change in mass. What's the, what's the charge do? I'm sorry, what's the atomic number do? Number what? No, the number, it's absorbing a negative charge into the nucleus, so it goes down one. Number minus one. Okay, and the last one, this is probably the easiest one of all. We call this one spontaneous spontaneous fission. Fission was one of your vocab words. What's fission mean? Like the of fusion. It's the opposite of fusion. Good. I like that. So whereas fusion was nuclei coming together to make a new thing, fission is one big nucleus falling apart. We abbreviate it SF. Spontaneous fission, that's pretty easy. Mass, question mark, charge, question mark, particle emitted, question mark, example, question mark. What happens is it just randomly falls apart. Um, so for instance, if we had, uh, let me try another actually, let me do a little bit better job of the example. Here's an example. Plutonium-239 undergoes spontaneous fission. And that's it. It just means it falls apart. So it could become, as a, a mass of 239, it could become uh, 111 plus 128, and then whatever elements those are. It just, it just falls apart into two random things that add up to the same thing it used to be. But we don't have to do any more than this. You just write that it underwent spontaneous fission, because it could be anything spontaneous fission. It falls apart on its own. That's what spontaneous fission means. You know, you're teenagers, so you know about the word spontaneous. If you're being spontaneous, you're like, oh, friend, let's go be spontaneous. You drive to Shatter and then you drive back home for no reason. That's spontaneous to you. But spontaneous just means it happens on its own. Spontaneous fission means, sorry, spontaneous fission means it falls apart on its own. You've been there. You've done that before, right? You've fallen apart on your own. You're, you're, something happens. Maybe you're not even having a particularly rough day, and you just think, I'm going to go spontaneously fizz in my bedroom. Which means I just fall apart for no reason. <laughs> questions? Uh, you have questions? Okay, now listen, we're going to go back through the math real quick. Okay, because we're running out of time, but we're going to go back through the math real quick. In this one, hey, in alpha, in alpha, the mass number goes what? Down four. Down four. Okay, I don't want to hear just Aaron. Everyone needs to be calling back. In alpha, the mass number goes down four, and the number, the atomic number, goes down two. Down two. Beta minus, mass number stays the same, and the atomic number up one. Beta plus, the mass number stays the same, and the atomic number down one. In gamma, mass number is the same stays the same, and the atomic number stays, stays the same. In electron num or, sorry, electron capture, the mass number stays, stays the same, and the atomic number goes up one. Up one. Up one. It goes up down one. one. It goes down one. It's absorbing a negative charge. And this one, okay.